Good morning. We welcome you to, whoops, excuse me. We welcome you to worship this morning. I'm Randy Jones, the pastor here at Radcliffe United Methodist Church. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're with us. We do have a few announcements to lift up today. Uh, we're getting ready for Vacation Bible School. The dates of Vacation Bible School will be um, June. It's the week after annual conference. That I do know. So uh, it's, it's the third week in June. So, but if you would like to help with Vacation Bible School or help last year with Vacation Bible School, we're going to have a planning meeting this Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, if you're interested, uh, Diane's back there. Wave Diane real quick. So we'll, um, y'all not, I was wanting Diane to wave so everybody knows who she was. Not you, Ashley, okay? Uh, but uh, that will be beginning then. Also, we, as we've started our children's church, we have a need down in our children's area we need a small, if someone would be willing to donate one, we need a small, not big, about like a monitor for a computer, a small smart TV. It needs to be a smart TV. Uh, we got lots of old TVs, but they don't work with the Internet. If we can have a smart TV downstairs, we can hook into the church's YouTube channel uh, so that the people who are down there and the adults who are down there can know what's going on within the worship service. So if you would be willing to help purchase one or know someone who has one and like to donate, it would be much appreciated. Also, it is that time of year that we're getting ready to look at maybe starting our garden. A garden has been tilled. We have purchased some uh, early crops like lettuce and bro broccoli, cabbage, and some other such things. Uh, and it was a little muddy yesterday, but we need to get them in the ground. So if you would be interested, I'm going to be out here about 4 o'clock this afternoon putting them in the ground. If you want to come out and help, I'll take all the help I can get. I uh, would appreciate it, but uh, we'll be starting to do some things with our garden, be getting some signs up here about our garden in a couple weeks. But we do welcome you for those who are with us online today. We are glad you're with us. Also, uh, there, we will have a bunco night this Friday at not, April 19th, starting in Sasala night at 6 o'clock, and then at 6.30 will be the time for fun and games. Everybody is welcome, correct, uh, Meredith? Men and men. And teens, and teens. So uh, you're more than welcome to come and be a part of that. We are glad you're here today as we continue to celebrate the Easter season in our lives. As we think about Easter, we're going to continue as we looked at the first chapter of the epistle of 1 John last week. Continue in 1 John in chapter 3 where we are talked about how we are the children of God. And we're going to think this morning about the importance being a part of the church and as Christians, how we can use our imagination like children do. And when it comes to doing the ministry of our, ministry of our Lord. A lot of times as we get older and get to be adults, we forget to use our imagination. But that's a good thing to do because it helps us vision. Let us pray together. Lord, we come today thanking you that we can worship you and that we can come into your presence. We invite you to, into our presence as we celebrate your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's greet those around us. Wave hello. Good morning. Good morning to Bob and Brenda online. I think. <laughs> uh, welcome to those that are visiting. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Let's begin our worship with our call to worship. How shall we live when lavished with love? We are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. Just as in our origins, our future is tied to our planet. Creator has given us partners for mutual flourishing. Let us worship God who makes all things new. Let's pray together. God of hope. We see your love poured out for us in all the world. Make us more like you. Teach us to live together as one community, human and beyond human, creature and created to your glory, so your love is known among all the living. Amen. Let's stand and give God praise because it tells us, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to use your instruments, which are your hands, and help us get started. Let everything, let everything 
that has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you in the valley. I'll praise in the mountain. Oh, I'll praise when I'm sure. And I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumbered and praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowned in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of oh, my soul. Praise the Lord of oh, my soul. I'll praise when I feel it, and I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise cause I know, oh, you're still in control. Oh, 
like to invite our young people up for young people's time. Come on, Lucy, say, Sister Susie's sitting on a thistle for me. Oh, come on. Lucy's getting old. She's losing her teeth. <laughs> Good morning. Some of y'all, some of y'all sit over here. You make me, make me feel sitting... I feel out of balance when it's like, thank you, Lucy. Appreciate that. All right. Let me ask you a question. If you had a couch, a table, a huge blanket, and a whole bunch of pillows, what do you have? A home? A home? Okay. You don't know. What could you do with a blanket, a couch, a whole bunch of pillows. Well, I know, make, a bed. make a bed? Sleep? Come on, y'all got imaginations. How about making a fort? You were gonna say a fort? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, and you make a fort and all of a sudden what happens when you get that fort? What can happen? What? It could fall down, that's true. But then you also you might have Big dragons outside that the fort keeps protects you from, right? Maybe. 
Yeah, I want I want I want y'all to think. I want y'all to Yes, that's what I want you to think about is make believe. Do y'all do ever do make believe? No. No. I do in you do school. in school? You make believe in school? Yep. Well, sometimes we need to. That is, you know what that's called? That's using our imaginations. That's because imagining things. So, uh, Elijah, you ever use your imagination? You do? What do you think about? What are the things you imagine? If you had... I put a bunch of chairs and put a blanket on top of them and make them a fort. That's a pretty good idea. Elijah takes a whole bunch of chairs and puts a blanket on top of them making a fort. Yep. So the couch and the pillows, the wall, and the blankets over the top. That's a good fort. That's a good thing. The reason I'm talking about using our imagination, did you know Jesus talks to us about we are his children, all of us. All of, all of us are his children, which means when we get to be old people like me, that we have to remember to be like you guys, to think about what we can do to change the world out there. That would be interesting. Uh, your blanket with a fan inside with the fort makes it look like you're, something's going on in there, doesn't it? See, but see, that's cool. It's learning how to use our imaginations. And as we live in the church, we learn how to use our imaginations to do things to help people out in the world. Thinking about ways that we do, like feeding people that are hungry, finding ways to feed them. You know, we're gonna have, we have a community garden, so we grow fresh food. And you all can actually, if you want to, come out and help me plant, help us plant. Because... Do you like to get your hands dirty? Yes. There we go. See, that's that's a good thing. That's what we want to do. I dirty and wet. Dirty and wet. Okay. All right. You like it on all that mud? See, that's that's. Sometimes I have to stick my hands in water to get it all out. That's true. Well, then, see, that's a good thing to do because it causes us helps us to help people and do learn those things about the land that God created us. All right. Let's have a prayer together. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you give us imaginations. And I ask you to be with our children as they grow so they can continue to have their imaginations to imagine what they can do in the world for you. Be with us this morning as we worship you together. In your name we pray. Amen. All righty. Let's see what we got here. And I think, are you all going downstairs, Diane? Okay, Miss Diane's going to take you all downstairs for children's time. Hey, everybody get one. You're very welcome, Elijah. Good morning. Is it on? Is it on? Okay. I'm reading from First John three, one through seven. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, what we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure oh, come on everyone who's who sins breaks the law in fact sin is lawlessness but you know that he appeared so that he might make way take away our sins and in him is no sin no one who lives no one who lives in him keeps on sinning no one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him dear children do not let anyone lead you astray 
The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now unite in this historical confession known as the Christian Creed. I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we go to prayer this morning, we do have some who are traveling and are out of town. We want to remember them. Also, we extend our sympathy to uh, Carol Willis. Carol's brother passed away this week in Georgia, and we remember her family during this time. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come today thanking you that you call us your children. And we know sometimes as children are that we sometimes do things we shouldn't do but you still welcome us back into your arms and love us. We thank you that we can use our imaginations as children to see the world and see how we can make a difference in the world to change the world. Because we know you help us and give us vision so we don't, we're not as we are, but can be as we need to be following you. This day, Lord, we know that our world needs your light. It needs your love. And we are the ones to share the light and to share the love. So, Lord, help us to be your people, to go into a world that needs to be healed of sin, of despair, of hurting. Because we know you help want us to do that. This morning, Lord, we pray for those who are struggling in our world, who are hurting. Pray for those who are dealing with problems that just seem overwhelming, and we need to let them know that you're with them and give them your love and your care. We pray for those who are grieving over lost loved ones and ask you to touch them, to give them your kindness and your joy and your love. Now draw us into a bond of unity as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue worship with the giving of our offerings.
Father, use these gifts for the ministry of your kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For those who are able, please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 34, starting with the second half of verse 36 through verse 47. This is the word of Christ. Hear it. And be attentive. Jesus says, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, they, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name 
to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. This is the word of Christ. Praise be to you, O Christ. may be seated. Last week we began looking at the message of the first epistle of John. We saw where the writer continues the theme of light versus darkness that is in the gospel of John. And today we continue with 1 John seeing how we are the children of God. In the prologue of the Gospel of John, we are told that Jesus was in the world. The world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave them the power or the authority to become the children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. The word power can also be translated authority. Through our Lord, we have the power to be the children of God. One of the wonderful messages of the gospel is that we are no longer saved by race, but by grace. Being the children of God has nothing to do with what race we are when we were born. All are welcome to become God's children. The wonderful privilege that we have is that our Lord takes us as we are and calls us his children. Think about that. The Lord takes us as we are. All of our flaws, all of our our imperfections and calls us his children. And as children, our creator is our ideal parent. Our creator is our ideal parent. Now, as a parent, I sometimes wonder, as I see my own children growing into adults, did I do the right things as they were growing up to help them make the right decisions in their lives, especially when I see them making bad decisions? What is interesting is when you're talking to them, It's when I start hearing my own father and mother coming out of my mouth. (laughs) Anybody Anybody else had that problem? As we celebrated the resurrected Christ, celebrate the resurrected Christ this morning, I would like to invite us to think like children today and how we can imagine being the children of God. Let's go back. Let's be five, six, four, seven, eight, under 10 years old. Just as children develop a healthy imagination, children of God are called to imagine themselves being formed in the image of Christ, having power over sin and love for God and neighbor. I was talking to the kids today and getting them to talk to me about how they play in their imagination. I think one of the struggles in in helping children have their imagination, they need to put down their technology so they can learn a little more about imagination. But when we watch a group of children play together, 
The first thing that we notice is that each of them maybe believes they are more than they appear to be. So we're saying get a bunch of pillows and blankets and chairs and they're no longer small children but mighty warriors constructing an impenetrable fortress. Or tie a tea towel around their neck and they transform from a mild-mannered kindergarten I was figured somebody would say laugh at that. Or at an energetic kindergartner into an invincible caped crusader. Give them a leftover cardboard tube and suddenly they're a wizard, a music musician, or an astronomer scouting the stars. We know from many studies that healthy imagination for children helps children in life in becoming an adult. And we can begin to see the possibilities in life as we grow and as we allow our imaginations to go wild, so to speak. It is the same way with the children of God. We are to allow our imaginations go wild for the kingdom of God. As a pastor and as a Christian, I am never satisfied with the status quo. We are to see the possibilities. Now, unfortunately, when we become adults, somewhere along the line, imagination begins to become more, less important to us than knowledge does. And as we get older, we get, get to be more concerned over what is instead of what it could be. Now, education and knowledge is very important because it gives us tools in learning about the present world and about ourselves. But sometimes we can allow in knowledge to impose limits on our imaginations and our capacity to think outside the box. It's not that knowledge is unimportant. It's that knowledge is limited without imagination. I mean, Albert Einstein, who most of us would consider the avatar for the pursuit of knowledge, he says this, Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world. Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. Now, here's an example about how knowledge can overtake us. In a congregation I used to serve, some of the congregation, we began to work together to begin to look at what were the needs in the community that we were in for school children. And several of us met with our three elementary schools that were in our area and see to what she, children needed the most. And their response was after school tutoring. So we began to develop a team of volunteers and we were gonna start it small, not to overwhelm ourselves and oversee the children and work with them two days a week. Put it all together. And as we began ready to Im implement this ministry, as we took it to the congregation that we were serving, they nixed the idea and refused to budge. And this was their reason. Having children in the building might cause some of the building to be damaged because children would be running around. They also said it would not bring any money into the church, so why should we, not, why should we do it? A lack of imagination, a lack of, poss of seeing the possibilities. Today this congregation is on life support, about ready to close. When we allow ourselves to look at ourselves as children and go back to being children when it comes to our faith, we embrace our innocence. Hear what 1 John says again. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart. And we are to strive to be pure in heart. But let's use our imaginations a moment 
when John says we'll be like him, our resurrected body. And, and think about it for a moment, okay? Let your mind go crazy. Jesus would appear inside locked rooms. Just appear. Using other different words, he could teleport, so to speak. He could think where he was going to be and he would be there. We will be like him. Our resurrected bodies the same way. I mean, let that sort of go. Think about it some today. When we allow ourselves to let our imaginations grow, we can change the world. Now let's go, when we go back to last week, we see the same theme in our text today about walking in the light and not sinning. And I'll remind us once again the definition of sin. It is anything that destroys our relationship with God, ourselves, and each other. When we allow those things to invade our world, our lives, and our churches, we cease being the children of God because we are not being like Christ. We need to allow our imaginations or vision to see what we can be, not what we are. Those who are born of him are indeed children of God. Now we might say that children of God are the product of God's own imagination. Going all the way back to creation when God created humankind in his image. We repeat what we stated earlier from the prologue to the Gospel of John. And we read that Jesus is the Word made flesh, is the perfect image of God, the one who has made him known to the world. Those who receive him have been given the authority or the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The children of God are to imagine themselves in the person of Jesus Christ and act accordingly. Like children wrapping themselves in the garb of the hero they want to be, we are to put on Christ. As Paul imagines in Romans, as a child might imagine being a force for pure good in the world, the children of God who imagine they can be like Jesus also purify themselves as he is pure. And then there's the real superpower for those of us who believe. The more the child of God believes they are in the mode of Jesus, the more power we have over sin. You know that he is revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin, says John. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Now, we may say, hey, we're still going to sin. Yes, we are. But for this, it may sound impossible for us to continue to strive what we call scriptural holiness in our lives. But we are to strive to live lives without sin so we can be fully like our Lord. The early 20th century evangelist Dwight L. Moody stated this, The work of Christ brings about the birth from God that is freedom from sin. The birth and the work of Christ brings about from the birth from God that is freedom from sin, but a freedom that must be ratified continually by willing and doing what is right. And John never ur tires of urging us. This week, I was invited to go with community leaders and other clergy of our community with a meeting with our Hardin County School Superintendent to look at the issues of blatant racism in the Hardin County Schools. There have been several incidents. As I listened, the more disturbed I became. Being like Christ is treating everyone, no matter who we are, with love and respect that Jesus gave to us, 
by going to the cross for us. In the past few years, it seems that those that have these sinful attitudes have been given permission to come out and be ugly and have horrific behavior toward people in the world. We as the church have the responsibility to speak out against such behavior, but more importantly, instead of speaking out, offering Christ to those who have this sinful attitude. And this is where I let my childlike imagination go. My imagination is this, that we can be in a world without sin, a world without prejudice, a world without hate. This imagination is the kingdom of God that Jesus speaks that we are to help bring into the world. We pray it every Sunday morning. Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are to go back to the beginning of the book of 1 John where he says, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. We are living in a very dark world right now. We each must be the light of Christ out into the world, exposing the sin of this world. We need to cultivate a healthy imagination or vision for our world. A child at play believes he or she can do anything. A healthy imagination brings creativity confidence, and a vision for the best of what life can be. Imagination can lead to discipline and a pursuit of an imagined goal, a focus on what to embrace and what to avoid in the pursuit of that goal, and the imitation of the kind of people we want to be. Children of God need to cultivate a healthy imagination for the kind people God created us to be. People modeled on Jesus Christ who love God and one another. And then we develop habits and practices to get us there. That's how we change. And that's how God can use us to change the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and respond to his word this morning with remembering that in the end, it's Jesus that when we are praising and when we are uh, talking with others and when we are um, just being with others, we can remember that our heart needs to be always only Jesus and not anything else.
Let your imaginations run wild. Let them run wild for the church, for Jesus, on what we can be to change our world that needs God's love so much right now. If you're visiting with us today, we're glad you were here and pray that you will come back and the service was a blessing for you. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds. May the love of his Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Every breath.